Do you want to feel like a race car driver? <laughs> or perhaps you just like specs? Aha! Uh -huh. Either way, gauges can help with that, and today I'm going to show you how to install them into any car. Today we are working on my 2006 VZ Commodore. If you want to see more videos of this car on my channel, I have a few others. How to install a head unit into a whole VY, VZ or Monaro, and how to install an amplifier into any car. Both videos are linked in the description. Okay, to start this gauge install, we're going to need some gauges, surprisingly. And for my ones, I have oil pressure and water temperature. And to go with the oil pressure one, we need a gauge adapter. And then with your water temperature one, you need a little water temperature sensor. And again, my car's a Commodore, so it's 34 millimeters on the inside diameter. Hey yeah, everybody, Future James here, and I'm here to say that in the video I said you needed a 34 mil gauge adapter, but in reality, if you have a Holden Commodore, you need a 38 mil. Make sure that you always check your pieces before you buy them. Okay, back to past James. We need a couple of things. We have this gauge pod for a VYVZ, which is exactly what we're going to need. Then we also have three of these little adder circuit things. And to go with these adder circuit things, you also need some fuses. You don't need as many fuses as I've got here. But um, I have two 7.5 amp ones and one 15. So with all the parts together, let's get some tools. Alright, here's the basic tools you're going to need. You're going to need a variety of screwdrivers and spanners. A ratchet with a socket set does help. And the one socket that you especially need to buy is a 1 and 1 16th stupidly imperial socket. A multimeter can help you find which fuses have the power. Then you've got a wire stripper, lighter, soldering wire and a soldering iron. And finally some scissors. As soon as we back out of the shed, we can get started. After we pop the bonnet, we can start by removing all the plastic clips from this cover piece. Next up, we'll remove this air pipe by removing the two nuts and the clip for the sensor wires. You may need to use a screwdriver. Then undo the hose clamp and place the pipe off to the side for now. Open the radiator cap to allow the system to drain faster and then we can pop off the top radiator hose. Now the original plan was to just drain the top radiator hose and then fill it back up later but as we went through the job we just decided to drain the whole system. With the top radiator hose off it's time to chop it in half. The tool of choice were some scissors because I don't have any pipe cutters and at this point I realised I got the wrong size adapter. So a quick trip to the store and we're back into it. Place the included hose clamps over each side of the hose and then insert the adapter and then just tighten down the screws. With that done and the hose in the right orientation, it's time to reinstall it. Then we drop the bottom radiator hose to drain the rest of the coolant. Now we can't run the car without coolant, so I got some coolant concentrate and some demineralized water, mix them 50-50. We just slowly put the rest of the coolant into the car then started it up and finished all the remaining steps in the coolant change. Now we can drive the car back into the garage and start on the oil gauge. Using the stupid Imperial 1 and 1 16 socket or about a 27mm socket, we can remove the original oil pressure sensor. However, don't throw this out because we still need it. This is the gauge adapter that we will be needing and this end goes into the car. The original sensor goes back in here and the new sensor goes on top. Placing some thread tape over these threads will prevent any sort of leaks. Then we can screw it into the adapter. Apply some more thread tape to this thread, then screw it into the car. Now this only needs to be about hand tight with just a quarter turn of the spanner. Put some thread tape on the new sensor and screw it in as best as you can. This part is tricky, you need to get the original connector onto the original sensor which is a very tight fit, but it is important otherwise you get this error whenever you start the car. With both the sensors installed, we can install the actual gauges, but first we need to test them. Grip the red, orange and white wires, and then connect them to a positive terminal on a 12 volt battery. Then connect the black wire to the negative and the gauge should light up. Time to wire this thing up, and we'll do the grounding points first because they're the easiest. I've got two wires that are similar in size and have fired a coating of a washer so I can solder to it. Then we can solder the wires together and then both to the washer. Thank you. 
I then attached a bullet point connector to one wire and a ring terminal to the other wire and connected them both to their sensors. And the washer got attached to a bolt on the side of the car. Now it's time for the sensor wires. I'm using a red wire for the water temperature and a green wire for the oil pressure. So we can strip the ends and add the terminals on. I then found the grommet on the passenger side and fed the wires through there and then pulled them through from the inside. Now we can remove the dash so we can run the wires. It all removes pretty simply with a few clips, however there's a few screws hiding so make sure you have a good look around first. Now don't throw out this top piece because we will be needing it later. Now it's not necessary to remove the head unit but it does make it a lot easier. I use a snake to pull the wires up to the top, also decide to run another grounding wire up here. Both of these gauges have the same basic wiring diagram. Orange wire is 12 volt, red wire is ignition 12 volt, white wire is dash 12 volt, black wire is for the vehicle's ground and the green wire goes to the gauge's sensor. Now the gauge wiring looms can be connected in some places, for example the red can be connected to the red, the orange can be connected to the orange, white to white and black to black. The red, orange and white wire can all be connected to a longer wire. Then the end of those wires will need to be connected to a fuse tap. Taking a squeeze at the fuse box under the steering wheel, we can find all the fuses we are after. We need a constant 12 volt, a 12 volt turn by accessory, and a fuse for the lights. If your car is nice, it will include a diagram for what each fuse does, and I'm using fuse 23, fuse 16, and fuse 11. Here's where I made a mistake of not checking every part. I got normal fuse taps, but my car uses mini fuses, so I had to swap them out. But with that done, I attached them into their spot. I fed the wires into the dash and connected the sensor wires together with solder and heat shrink. Now here's where we need our old panel and we remove the little metal clips and place them directly onto the new gauge pod. Now we can get our gauges and first up let's remove the little nuts already on the gauge and install these risers. Next put them into the pod and attach this metal bracket. Perfect and now we can throw out the old panel if you like. Now for the last step of connecting the correct wires to each gauge and clipping it in. Then reassemble the dash and test it out. Starting up the car the oil pressure just shoots straight up and as we go for a drive to test these out you can see the oil pressure will change depending on how you're driving. If you have more revs it will be higher but if you have less it will be lower. My car normally sits at about 30 psi at its lowest and about 80 psi at its highest. Whereas the water temperature is a slightly different story. It takes a little bit of driving before it shoots up where it sits on about 80 degrees Celsius at its normal operating temperature. So that's how you install working gauges into your car so you can feel like a proper race car driver. Don't forget to check out my Instagram for photos of projects before they make it to YouTube and you can also send me a message there if you have any questions. If you did really enjoy this video, the best way to support it is to subscribe and share with a friend. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.